Hey folks, it is the Nutty Knife Guy. It's one o'clock in the morning, and I had enough time to sit down and do a really quick video. I didn't get a video in last week, and I know you were all distraught that the world came to an end because I didn't do a video last week. Uh, but it was busy. When I wasn't busy, the weather was bad. Had some projects going on. So uh, I couldn't get out to the war post. And I might not be able to get the war post this week either. So I just thought I'd sit down and uh, do a quickie. Uh, I've got four things to tell you about some new toys. Uh, and these all, I think, at least all of them, at least I know three of them, will get a review. The other one might not be wor worth reviewing. So, uh, so not the, I am going, like I said, uh, posting this, you know, middle of the night while I'm thinking on it before I go to bed. So there it is. That's also why there's no light. I usually film with some light coming in through the basement window. But here we go. I got some good stuff. Uh, some of it is from... One of them is from a very well-respected company. One is from a company that a lot of people know about, but maybe don't know about their quality. And two of them are El Cheapos. But one of the El Cheapos I like a lot. The other one, uh, well, I don't dislike it. We'll put it that way. So here we go. The first one is a cheap Cisco Supply Cutlass. Now, I've been at the knives for a long time. I'm really only starting to get into swords. And I just wanted something, and uh, God willing, in the River Don't Rise, I'm going to be starting an online uh, historical European martial arts class, hopefully next month, maybe a little sooner. God willing, in the River Don't Rise. And I just wanted a one-handed sword that could uh, stand in for all the one-handed swords that I'm going to be trying to learn. Uh, and because I wanted to buy some better knives, <laughs> some better knives, and I had some other things I wanted to buy, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. So I went for the Cisco. Now, get this all in frame here. This is a Cisco Supply. Cutlass, pirate cutlass, uh, 25 inch stainless steel blade, uh, a nice sturdy uh, handguard, stainless steel handguard, and uh, I have taken this out real quick and chopped at some uh, dead dogwood tree we have outside, chopped at the branches, and it's held up very well. It's solid and uh, the fit and finish was okay. Now. Because I wanted to use this thing for practice, I did just use some, I took some foam uh, and some electrical tape to this thing because uh, the handle was round and it was slippery and even not even hitting anything, if I was just moving it around, it was turning in my hand and that was driving me insane. So I just took some old foam rubber and cut it strip and taped it to the inside here and did some duct tape and made the grip a little bit more, uh, more oval. Uh, it's at least usable now. It's not, The tape's not on here because the thing was falling apart or anything. It's just that the handle was, although it was beautiful, it was pretty, uh, it wasn't functional. I am going to get some uh, leather, simulated leather tennis racket tape and put it on the handle just to make it look a little better. And maybe I'm probably gonna to try to get a more oval shape out of it too. I'll probably just put a couple of strips on top of each other here and then wrap that up. So I get more oval and it doesn't tend to turn my hands so much. But for $30, I mean, I knew I, was getting, I wasn't getting a fantastic sword for 30 bucks, but it will help with my practice. I think it's a bit heavier than a historically accurate cutlass. Uh, and I am just now trying to build my arms up to do, uh, to do swords. 
Uh, trying to learn sword play is murder on the arms. I mean, because you want to train both arms so you don't get one armed overdeveloped. But the shoulders, and especially, uh, you feel the burn, especially if you got something that's, I think, maybe half a pound or so heavier than it needs to be. You feel that half a pound when it's when your arm's extended. Uh, the, short, the sheath is not as crappy as I thought it would be based on the reviews that I read. Uh, but it's clearly not meant to be worn for any length of time. Uh, the sheet itself is actually not, it's not bad. I mean, it's its fairly sturdy. You're not going to be carrying this around on a pirate ship for very long or even out in the woods uh, because this is barely attached. It's got a little glue. It's got some stitches with really thin thread. If you had that heavy sword and this thing bouncing up and down on your belt and going like this for a couple of hours, uh, this would almost certainly come off. Uh, but then again, they know that people aren't going to be using this in the field. At least, we, they hope nobody's that stupid. <laughs> but for what I wanted to do with it, it's okay. Okay, next is something I like a lot better. This is also sub $30, and it's also from Cisco. And incidentally, both these swords came from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Uh, a lot of good stuff on that channel, and their prices are very, I mean, on that site, their prices are never really uh, very reasonable. That this, they haven't paid me or anything like that. I bought these, but uh, good site. Um, this is the D Guard Boon Knife Short Sword. I like this thing a lot. This thing feels really good in the hand, and it's also a good stand in for uh, one handed swords. Especially since when I'm taking my class, hopefully I'll be able to go outside for most of them so I can use the longer ones. But if it's raining or something, I'm going to be down here in my basement and I have a really low ceiling here. So I'll do the drills for broadsword or arming sword or saber or whatever they're, or whatever they're teaching that time in that day with this thing. And I've already uh, asked them about some of the subsequent weapons. They understand that not everybody can have all the different weapons. Although one day I hope to. Uh, let's see if I remember this is an 18 inch blade. Uh, it's got a very nice wooden handle and uh, I find I kind of like the shape. Uh, fit is, I would call it good. Finish, I would give it a good. Uh, it's very solid. Again, I was out there whacking on a dogwood tree with it today, taking off some limbs and uh, it actually took me about two whacks with this thing to go through a branch about this thick. And dogwood's a fairly hard tree. So, uh, and everything is still solid. Uh, like I said, eventually I'll get out to the workpost with these. But I love this thing. Uh, this has been my TV chair knife while I'm watching. Now, granted, I've been kind of like really focusing on swordsmanship for like the last two weeks. And when I'm watching TV, I'm watching videos about swordsmanship but uh, this is uh, I really like this thing. I might actually buy another one just because I like this one uh, and maybe if I feel like cutting my fingers off uh, dual wielding this did come fairly sharp and it took a nice edge and uh, there was no edge rolls like I said I'll show you people instead of tell when I go out there and do some testing with it uh, I am saving up some water jugs for this some gallon milk jugs for this thing. So, uh, there's that. Okay, and then we have something on the little more respectable end of things when it comes to quality and company. The K-Bar Dog's Head. Now, this is pretty similar to the classic, we all know it, USMC Marine Corps fighter by K bar uh, yeah just some differences um, I handle K bars and I had uh, a K bar in my collection briefly and I traded it away I know this is knife heresy for knife people but I am not a huge fan of the classic Marine Corps K bar uh, and I am not saying that it's not a good knife it's a great knife it's an icon right there are many 
uh, enemies of freedom and justice in the, in the American way that are dead because of the Marine Corps table. Uh, but my, I had two major problems with it, is the handle was smooth and it was round. And the guards on the Quillen uh, face downward towards the hand. I mean, the Quillen's on the guard face downward towards the hand, and I never liked that. It always was jabbing me in the hand. Uh, so I saw this one, oddly enough, on uh, Guys Talk Knives, which is kind of a knife show, a knife talk show put on by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and they featured this, and also so they said it was on special. They had been on special. But anyway, uh, this one, as near as I can tell, is just a little bit more oval shaped than the classic cable, Marine Corps K-Bar. Uh, so it doesn't tend to turn the hand, and the guard is straight. I like that. Uh, it has this nice pommel, which, like all genuine K-Bars, are peen. Not good light to see that, I don't think. Maybe if I turn it that way. Yeah, I don't think you can see it in this light. But anyway, uh, and this is the, it's, I like this, I like the feel of this knife better than the classical K-Bar. But it is so close to the classical K-Bar that I don't feel the need to re get a classical K-Bar for my collection, considering that I'm not crazy about it. Again, if you're a K-Bar cultist, don't hate me, don't send me comments. Uh, it's a personal preference. It's not saying that a knife is junk. Uh, it clearly isn't. It's been around for a long time. It's going to be around probably long after I'm dead and gone. So it's just personal preference. <laughs> uh, but uh, but to tell you the truth, with this one, I was kind of disappointed when I got it. I was really hoping, uh, I really thought I was going to like this one. I had a lot of high hopes for this. But uh, when I got it in my hand, my reaction was, eh. I don't have anything necessarily that I dislike about this knife. I just don't have anything I really like about it either. Uh, the only instant thing that I found is that this pommel, this protrusion of the pommel here, does kind of get in, bite into this part of my hand down here. It doesn't hurt, and it's not really uncomfortable. It's just a little distracting. Uh, and, you know, K-Bar makes leather sheet. You get a leather sheath with K-Bars. Knives are made in America. Sheets are made in Mexico. Uh, I will do a full review. Now, the last thing I have to show you is something that I was really pleasantly surprised with. I just got this yesterday, and it's my new EC EDC folder. This is a Kubi, and I hope they have the model number on the knife because I forget. Uh, I will look the model number up and put it in the description uh, of this video. Um, I'm thinking it's mo uh, model 452, but like I said, I will look it up and put it in the description. This thing is amazing in the hand. B2 steel. I love the reed curve. Uh, it's got a really smooth, snappy action. Feels great in reverse and standard grip. Uh, it's kind of optimized for saber grip. It does have some jimping uh, on the spine, but it's not deep. It is just right. It's just enough to keep your hand from sliding around too much. Uh, it came, I'm, there's no sense in trying to show you the arm hair in this light, but right off the bat, it, it wasn't just taking two hairs off. It was leaving a ball patch on my arm. And, now, granted, I test my knives that way so long, so often that a lot of times I don't have a whole lot of hair to shave off. But this took what this took a lot of what was there. Uh, very impressed. This was, I want to say, twenty three dollars on Amazon. Uh, uh, D two steel, a nice thick knife. I like knives to be deep. Nice thick liners, 
uh, you can't, you're not going to be able to see it inside, but the uh, liners are skeletonized to bring down the weight a bit. G10 handle scales, um, an adjustable pivot, and they even have the grooves in here so you can kind of get your finger in there and hold that when you want to adjust it. I haven't had to do that yet. Um, uh, I am now very interested in buying other QB9. Yes, they're made in China. Both the swords that I showed you are made in Pakistan. I am going to have non-American made knives in my collection. Some of them will be Chinese. Will I tend to avoid them if I can get something comparable and it's made in the U.S.? Absolutely. But this was something I was looking for in my uh, new EDC. I was never thrilled with carrying the Spider Co. Tenacious as an EDC. In my mind, it didn't really, it, even though it was sharp, the blade uh, design doesn't really cut very well. And you know, the hole was kind of hard to get to. The opening hole was kind of hard to get to. And uh, I also wanted something that was recurved because I like the way recurves cut, and I don't have a problem sharpening recurves. I had almost bought a reek uh, knife that was very similar in its profile. It had a reek. But I have one reek in my collection. I decided to give Kubi a chance, and I'm very, very glad I did. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about this knife. Uh, even the clip and pocket clips are a real pet peeve with me on pocket knives. Uh, they either are too tight, too short, too loose. Uh, they you you're always I'm always having to check my pocket, make sure that it that it hasn't fallen out, or fallen a dot, uh, fallen in my pocket. Now, like I said, I only had this for a day, but I haven't had this. Uh, you've got a nice rise right here ramp I guess you'd call it to get it into your pocket uh, it is substantial it is not thin this is not going to snap and uh, I'm liking it a lot the one thing that uh, another reviewer it was either Nick Shabazz or Love Them Knives did say that the flipper is a little tricky because you have to get it and pull it straight back if you do that, you've got a really, really nice uh, action here. It uses uh, ceramic bearings. Comes open very nicely. But uh, you can push straight down on this thing all day and it's not coming. It's got to come straight back. It took a little while to get used to that. Uh, the flipper comes down into a nice kind of half guard. It's, it's very unlikely you're going to slide down catch yourself on this blade. I love it. Uh, this is another one. I might just buy another one just to have as a spare uh, in case this one does get lost or you know, I do something stupid with it and they break it you know, or I'm forced to do something you shouldn't do with a knife because of the situation and I break it. Uh, this is one of those knives that if it breaks I'm going to not want to be without it. Uh, so, like I said, I'm going to do full review and testing on all of these things. Uh, the swords, I'm going to kind of have to figure out how I'm going to test them because I'm not really knowledgeable about swords yet. Probably no more than your average bear, average bear because I've been reading voraciously about them and watching all these videos and stuff, and I'm going to take the class. But I'm not really set up to test swords. And these are stainless steel. They're not high carbon, so I can't expect them to really take the, uh, take the beatings that a real combat ready sword will. Um, so I'm either going to do full tabletop reviews of these things or come up with some way of doing something entertaining outside with them. Maybe with the war post. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, that's it for right now. Uh, like I said, sorry about last week. Life. Uh, next week, again, God willing and the river don't rise. Uh, I'll be taking you showing you some more of these things I'll probably start with the K bar because I find out that if I do a review of a big brand name I get more views that kind of baffles me because like if you usually if you get something K bar cold steel benchmade or anything like that a lot of people have them and there's a lot of reviews out there and you know, really, if you're getting a K-Bar, if you're getting a Benchmade, if you're getting a Cold Steel, if you're getting even a Gerber, 
you're probably going to get a decent knife. So I don't watch it. I might watch one or two reviews, but I don't do in-depth QRE watching and review searches for big company knives that I'm going to buy or that I'm interested in buying because the company name has that reputation. What I really want to see for myself, what I really want to see in my reviews is kind of the obscure budget knives that might be good and might not be, and I can get some information get some information, collect a little intelligence before I buy it, which is why I do a lot of the budget knives. But anyway, I'll probably start with the KOR just to bump up my cube, my view numbers, and then uh, think about doing the others. Uh, so there it is. And as usual, I admonish you to draw your knives only in just purpose. Sheathe them only with honor. And to remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. Please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and it really helps. And I bid you.